Hi, welcome to the part 19 of this playlist. Remember, we are looking at real certification questions. Needless to say, please focus on the concepts. The understanding of the concepts will help you clear the certification successfully. Please subscribe to my channel and hit the like button. There is a thanks icon below this video. I would appreciate if you would want to put in your comments as a thank you note. Any contributions there will help the team ramp up and prepare more content which will be helpful for you to clear the certifications. There is no obligation. Please remember this channel is totally dedicated to help you clear cloud certifications, AWS, Azure, and GCP. For previous questions, please refer parts 1 to 18 of this playlist. There is also an old playlist. Please do refer those videos as well. Now let's look at this question. Suppose you are working for a company, say Barclays, just as an example. You see most of the corporates, they have an access machine at their entrance. Something similar to this, you swipe your ID cards here. Those are also your access cards. And then you get intermittent access to this facility. In our question, the same thing is happening. Now what happens is from this place, the data is sent in the form of HTTPS messages. And you need to put something here at this point to take this data and process it. So now you got four options, but I will tell you a thumb rule. Whenever you see the word HTTPS, think of API gateways. Why API gateways? because this is a service which has been provided by AWS for creating, publishing, monitoring, securing, REST, HTTP, and WebSocket APIs at scale. Now you might ask, I didn't get a clue what is API Gateway Boss. So simple thing, it enables client-server communication in a stateless manner. Take this example. You have uh, streaming users, you have mobile and web applications here, you have IoT devices, and so on. You plug API gateway in between, okay? And then you can take that data, use it for monitoring purpose in CloudWatch. Like, you know, you take this data and put it in CloudWatch if you want to monitor this data. Okay, the monitoring can be of different kind. You can create custom metrics and then see if a person who is a vendor and that person is coming off office hours, do I need to do something, inform his manager, etc. Just as an example I've given. Now what happens is, it might happen that you might just get this data in API gateway cache and you want to put it further for processing. The processing can be done by Lambda or it can be done by Kinesis or any other AWS services. And the final data sets can be put in DynamoDB or you can put it in EC2 instance. When I mean EC2 means there must be some application on EC2 and that application must be on an instance and it will process it. Maybe some ETL program like Informatica or some BI program like Cognos or Microsoft, uh, not MicroStrategy and so on. So the option A here suggests that you plug EC2 instance. We just saw in the diagram, it has to be API gateway. EC2 instance would be on the far end here, here. Hence, A is wrong, B looks correct because it's talking about plugging an API gateway. So we would plug an API gateway this way, just like in this diagram. And then it says is you would configure the gateway endpoint to invoke Lambda function to process the messages. So that means this API gateway, it will send the request to Lambda to process the messages, perfectly fine and then it will save the results to a DynamoDB table. Now we all know Lambda is a compute solution, a serverless compute solution. It is not a storage solution. And hence you need to 
send this to MS on DynamoDB to store the data. Perfect. So option B meets all the requirements. This is the right answer. Now option C suggests to use route 53 at this point here. Route 53. See, it is a routing service and it routes users to internet applications. You know, like a domain name system, it is just like your a phone book, a directory. You yourself maintain your phone directory so that you have all the necessary contact information saved there. Your plumbing guy, your carpenter, your friend, your driver, your boss, your relatives, and so on. It's just like that. Route 53 will help you connect to those people just like your phone book you just dial the number and it connects it routes the request so that you can talk to that person similarly route 53 helps you route to an application across the internet simple so hence c is wrong and uh, when we say d d is saying that you have a vpc endpoint for s3 and then have a side to side vpn so we do not need a side to side vpn in this case because the communication can still happen without this site-to-site -site VPN and what this also this option is saying is uh, it will straight away dump the data in S3 buckets it will not process it see it, this solution should be highly accessible and the findings made available for analysis so where is that process to make that finding? It is just dumping in an S3 bucket. So hence, this is wrong. Hence, this is my final answer. Let's look at the next one. So you can pause this video and read this carefully. So you have a business, something example, like a Walmart, a retail business, just as an example. And Walmart wants to move all its on-premises applications so the applications were residing here and now these have to be moved into aws data centers so this is an aws data center now when you move it you one thing you have to take into consideration is there are hundreds of terabytes of data here and you got to move it to s3 but this internet connection is not stable there can be intermittent interruption if there is an intermittent interruption still your solution should work now consider that you have bought a big house a lot of features and facilities and you are vacating your old house you want to go from your old house here to the new house here and when you are going so obviously what you would do is you would take a movers and packers and you would move so you would pack everything and move okay so that is called one time move but you <clears throat> have not changed the address in most of the places so you keep receiving couriers and packages in your old address so the next thing is you want to establish a process so that whatever incremental stuff that is there at your house you want to keep moving it both are your house but then there has to be a process set up so there are two processes one time and incremental so this is the key to solve this answer because we are supposed to provide solutions for each one of them in the real world okay but in this question they are just asking about continuous data transfer so this is mostly incremental okay that means whenever a courier comes to your old house you have to keep getting it to your new house and you have to establish a process for that now out of these four options which one should be utilized the first one says data sync if you see this data sync it is meant for this purpose to accelerate data migrations so if you have seen this movie transporter this guy used to transport stuff from here and there so consider data sync as transporter it kind of transports your data 
from your on-prem to cloud so this would be my answer but let's look at migration hub see migration hub it is like an orchestrator you all must have seen in music there is an orchestrator and he or she directs what will be played by whom this guy here he's a known well-known orchestrator Francisco Marchetti so Francisco Marchetti is your migration hub and Francisco just helps you with orchestrating stuff he does not himself play similarly migration hub will not migrate data sync will migrate migration hub will help you orchestrate the migration let's look at C snowball edge storage optimized always remember the snow family there are three entities here snowball snowball edge and snow mobile snowball has storage snowball edge has storage and compute and snow mobile is for lots and lots of storage now where do you use snowball edge a group of scientists they go to north pole for some expedition and data collection they will take snowball edge because it's not only about storage it's also about compute so in principle snowball edge is wrong i'll tell you why if today your company wants a snowball device they will put a requisition with aws and aws takes approximately three to five business days to deliver this when you need continuous data transfer you cannot wait for the device to be coming in it has to be continuous if you are waiting for something that means it is not continuous the last one aws transfer for sftp see you need a solution to transfer data this is what is the key here and this is a good product if you have a lot of files to be transferred and put into your s3 buckets for archiving or further processing data transfers are not file transfers database transfers are similar to data transfers so d is wrong so this is my answer let's look at this one there are multiple ec2 instances there is an alb in between okay this is the alb and this is your user so on these ec2 instances you got your application now those applications are working perfectly fine if the cpu utilization is close to or equal to 40 percent that means if this number of user here if it increases and if the utilization of these cpus go beyond 40 that is 40 percent then there is a problem now always remember always try to find out out of the options this whiz through and see which is the most stupid option and weed that out so in this place the most stupid option is using lambda for auto scaling if mercedes benz has a sophisticated way of using the wiper it will use its own wiper instead of borrowing it from suzuki or kia the same principle here if there is a feature available in ec2 to auto scale then why the hell you would use lambda now we need to understand what are these policies like simple scaling policy let's first understand this so how does simple scaling work simple you you always know that the scale up is done based on the cloud watch alarms so you set a cloud watch alarm say the cpu if the cpu is more than 40 percent then you 
create an auto scale um, you scale up the ec2 instance so everything works through the alarm so that is a simple scaling policy today you have three ec2 instances the alarm says okay guy you are above 50 percent you would spawn one more ec2 instance the guy then says hey you know what you are like you have breached the threshold by like 20 more percent you are at 70 percent cpu utilization you spawn one more ec2 instance and this is how it goes and once the load decreases people say hey you know what uh the alarm says i am just utilizing 30 percent now so what you do is you go to options you use erase and you erase this ec2 instance you erase this ec2 instance it's no longer required you can manage with what you had i hope it's clear but let's look if there is a better option let's look at b use a target tracking policy so in target what you do is you also set the target instead of just using the alarms you also tell it boss i want like for example you set a target that six is your target for example six so the moment the breach happens the cloud watch alarm you you can go up to six that's your target because you know at six it will perform optimally instead of guessing okay what we spawn one at a time or use step scaling and so on this is far better why do i say so it's far better because they already gave you a clue this is the clue okay the program operates optimally when it is close to 40 percent so i know i'll do a calculation and say okay my program will operate optimally if i have a target of six i'll start with three i would put the remaining three in the auto scaling group and set a target scaling policy of six or that that's how like maximum six instances can be spawned in the auto scaling group because i already know that I've done my calculation so this looks correct and hence I would strike this out why I'm striking this out because simple scaling policy I would set the alarm and the threshold if suppose if the, if the threshold the threshold cannot be too low as 40 okay uh, the threshold if I set the threshold at 70 and then I set the alarm uh, and then I don't set the target so I know that again if I have created one instance that will also breach a threshold and again I create a new instance and so on so that is a bit time consuming plus there is a cool time period in simple scaling which is a problem okay let's look at scheduled scaling actions when we do scheduled scaling actions is when we are very clear that at night 1 a.m to 3 a.m is where your reports would run or where your jobs will run and you need maximum compute that time here i don't know if you see this question nowhere 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 they have mentioned any time like when this the load happens they have not mentioned that hence i do not have any data point to select option d as an answer so this is my final answer please subscribe to this channel remember it takes a lot of hard work and effort to get these contents out to you if you wish you can also click the thanks button below this video this brings us to the end of part 19 see you in the next part this channel is totally dedicated to help you clear cloud certifications concepts are a key See you in the next part. Ciao.